Warning, this video may contain disturbing images including blood and grossness. Watch at your own risk. This is the story of how I messed up my feet. Might be asking, how did it happen? Well, it happened skiing. Here's a picture of me and my friends, Rylan and Edwin. We had previously gone skiing through the Pit Ski Club and we had a really great time. So we were going to go again. But Rylan had just gotten over being sick and so she was ambivalent about going and didn't end up coming, which kind of sucked. Later we found out Rylan was... Uh, didn't want to go also because she felt that there was bad vibes about the trip. And turns out, <laughs> she was kind of right. So we were having a really good night skiing and there was a really pretty sunset even. And so we took a picture with it and here, here's that picture and here's another one. And this picture was the last known picture of my complete teeth. After that, we started to we had some more fun, we went down some more trails, and it was getting colder, it was getting icier, and it was getting darker because these trips were uh, Friday night trips. So I suggested we race. Edwin agreed, so we raced. First, we were side by side, it was so close, anyone's game. But then, Edwin cut right in front of me so I couldn't get around him. I was pissed. I wanted to win. And so then when there was a curve, I cut right back around him again. And then I was in the lead. And then I started flying down, leaving him in the dust. And I knew, I knew this was going to be a victory for me. And I was so pumped. I kept going and going. I went turn and I just bombed down it so that I would win. And then I could see the end inside. I could see the bottom of the hill where the lift was. But there was a merging trail first. Ours came from the side. The other one went straight towards the lift, so we had to merge on. I looked up the hill to make sure that nobody was coming from the merging trail. But what I did not do was look down until it was too late. There was a jump right in front of me. But because I came from the side, I went off it to the side to where the fence was, blocking you from falling down the hill. <laughs> Bam! I hit the fence and I fell down the hill. But I did not just hit the fence. The fence was meshed. That was fine. I hit the pole on the fence with my two front teeth. And then I fell down the hill that it was blocking you from falling down. Luckily, I landed upright, not on my head or anything. But I could immediately feel that something was wrong. I wasn't in pain. But I looked down and there was blood. And I could feel inside my mouth that my tooth was touching my bottom lip. And I wasn't close. My mouth was gaping open. My tooth was right here. Right after that, Edwin came because he witnessed the incident. He was not too far behind, but I was definitely in the lead. And another girl, the only other one who saw what happened, came and was like, Oh my God, are you okay? And then I looked up and I smiled. And Edwin freaked out because he could see my tooth was down here. And he was like, Oh my God, Tess, Tess. Has. And then the other girl who's right there was like, she needs help, she needs help, she needs help. And there was nearby workers walking away from the lift and she beckoned them over and was like, she needs help. And I thought it was pretty funny because my tooth was outside my mouth. So I took out my phone and I took a selfie. And here's that selfie, the iconic selfie. Here is the moment. And then those workers came and they said, this is no time to take a selfie. We have to help you. Come on, come on, right now, right now. So they immediately helped me get out of my skis and brought me right to the lift and had me sit inside, <laughs> sit inside while they called the ski patrol and <laughs> gave me just a bunch of tissues. And so I was just kind of bleeding everywhere, just sitting there chilling with the lift guy, just blood everywhere. And then the ski patrol came and he helped me into a nearby car that was kept specifically for incidences like this and he drove me and Edwin to the uh, first aid cabin but on the way this guy was great he showed us a tour like oh here's employee housing here's the maintenance um, building and here's this and that and I got a whole tour of the back of Seven Springs which I highly recommend if anybody is interested so we got to the first aid cabin and then they're like oh you need to go to the hospital I was like uh, okay, you know, sounds sounds about right to me, you know, I don't really know, but okay. And because I wasn't really in any pain, they kept asking me, are you in pain? And I was like, nah, it kind of throbs a little bit, but that was about it. But at this point, I was having trouble talking, and I wasn't really sure they wanted to go in an ambulance because they're kind of expensive, and you know, America sucks. And so I was going to kind of be like, no, but I couldn't really talk. He's not who is down here. And so I kind of just went along, and I was like, 
Okay. They brought me to UPMC Pittsburgh. Chilled in the back of the ambulance. Tried to talk to the paramedic a little bit. He was a really cool guy. Highly recommend. Had a good time. It was my first ambulance ride ever. And gotta say, it was a good one. And then we got to the emergency room. It was a Friday night at like 9, 9.30 p.m. It was empty. So luckily I got right put right in a room. Me and Edwin were just chilling there. And then the doctor came in. And she's like, oh, we have to call the dentist because he's not here right now. And so he's going to come in He's because he's at home. So he'll come in. And so then we waited for like an hour for the dentist to come in. And I was just chilling. And then the dentist came. And he looked and he was like, oh, what happened? And then I like tried to explain it and Edwin helped out because I couldn't really talk. So he looked at the tooth and he felt it and he felt it and he tried to wiggle around and was having a little difficulty. And, he's, and so he said, it, it's already swelled up and so I can't really move this back in place easily. I think it would you think you might just have to wait till Monday when the full dental clinic opens up because this was an emergency room and all he had was his backpack and he had all the normal dental equipment that you would need to fix this and he, I think he saw the fear in my eyes I couldn't even close my mouth I did not know how I was going to survive the whole weekend uh, and like this with my mouth open like, this was Friday night and he was saying Monday morning so I think he saw that and then he was like L let me try I might be able to then he decided to use anesthesia shots put them around my around where the tooth was and uh, I've got to say, that was the only part of the thing that really hurt, and those were not fun. And so then he, he moved the tooth, and he tried to move it around a little bit, and then pushed it back in, and I could feel the crunch when it hit where the bone was. I was like, okay, okay. I was like, oh, I, I think I got it, and I think it's back in place. And then it turned out like it basically was. And so... He, and so after that, we were soon discharged from the hospital, and I was told basically just go to the dental clinic Monday morning first thing, and and they'll fix everything else specifically like that and everything. So Monday morning comes along, and I go to the dental clinic. Well, I was seen by first uh, first the third year dental student, and then her supervisor too, and then another doctor came in and took a look and. And they were worried that I had broken like the bones up here, so then they had another specialist come in to feel the bones and see if any of those were broken too. So they ended up deciding that they needed more x-rays, so they got a 3D x-ray of my entire mouth just to ensure that nothing else was broken. So then I was turned over to the endodontist, yet another dentist, and she did a partial root canal on this tooth and then put in a brace to prevent them from moving. So essentially what the plan was was that they were worried that they felt that they tried to fill this tooth now or fix that up now that it would cause more trauma because there was a break up here and they wanted that to heal first and the gum so they so what they ended up doing was just doing a partial root canal that first day and then put, putting this brace on to prevent the teeth from moving around so that they could heal um, and then I went back two weeks later and she finished the root canal but she still wanted to leave the brace on for another two weeks to ensure that there was so so that this tooth would become completely immobile and the, the break would fully repair itself and then after that the plan was to fill this tooth uh when it was ready and take off the brace um and probably do another root canal on this tooth however that was when coronavirus hit I was on spring break when I got the call that my campus was closing and then a week after that we got the call that the dental clinic was completely closed so I couldn't even go down just to visit there. And soon after that all the nearby dentists closed and the Yale and Yukon dental clinics in Connecticut also closed. So now here I am stuck looking like this. This brace could have come off a month ago now and has not as you can see. And, uh, and this tooth turns out was now put completely back in place. It's sticking out and kind of crooked, so I can't fully close my mouth. Still can't use my front teeth. And I'm gonna keep looking like this until the coronavirus is over. So that's fun. I hope that eventually the dentist will open back up when it's safe and I can get my teeth fixed for good. But until then, I'm going to continue to have this amazing smile. I know you're all jealous. Thank you for coming to my story time and hopefully this video is okay.